Welcome back everyone. It's great to be on YouTube again. I apologize for the delay in uploading new content, but I've been busy putting the finishing touches on my first course. The Ultimate Guide to AI Digital Models on Stable Diffusion Comfy UI. I'm excited to announce that the course is now live. This comprehensive four-hour course is designed to take you from absolute beginner to creating your own AI digital model. If you're interested in diving into this exciting field, please check out the link in the description below. Don't forget to use the discount code at checkout for a generous 40% off. In addition to creating the course, I've been hard at work on Flux, training my AI digital model Laura to achieve better body and face consistency. I completed the training locally on a 24 GB VRAM graphics card, which took around four hours. However, I understand that not everyone has access to high VRAM cards. That's why in this tutorial, we'll explore how to use cloud-based GPUs for training. I'll guide you through the process of preparing your dataset correctly and training your LoRa model step-by-step. Step. The best part? This entire process won't cost you more than $2.5 to $3, making it significantly more affordable than services like Replicate and other similar platforms. Let's begin by setting up an account on runpod.io. Runpod is a cloud-based GPU service that allows you to rent powerful GPUs on an hourly basis. One of the great advantages of Runpod is its selection of ready-to-use templates, which will save you considerable time and effort during the installation process. To get started, add funds to your account. Once that's done, we'll set up our first pod together. When deploying pods, Make sure to apply the following filters. Select GPU and Community Cloud. It's also crucial to choose Extreme Internet Speed because we'll be downloading large files and we want the process to be as quick as possible. You'll notice that RunPod offers NVIDIA's latest generation cards. However, for our purposes, the most important factors are VRAM, CPU, and RAM. We can find suitable options in the previous generation of cards I recommend selecting the A40 GPU. This card comes with an impressive 48 gigabytes of VRAM, 50 gigabytes of RAM, and nine CPUs. This configuration will provide more than enough power for our AI model training while keeping costs reasonable. Now let's configure our pod settings. Start by selecting the PyTorch 2.2 template with Python 3.10 and CUDA 12.1.1. We'll need to modify this template slightly to suit our needs. First, let's increase our disk space. Set both the container disk and volume disk to 120 gigabytes. This will ensure we have ample storage for our datasets and models. Next, we need to expose the Comfy UI port, which is 8188. This step is crucial as we'll be using Comfy UI to prepare our dataset. Once these adjustments are made, click on Deploy on demand. Your pod will be ready in just a few seconds. Wait for the connect button to become active, then click it to access the Jupyter Notebook interface. In the Jupyter Notebook interface, We'll be working primarily with two tools, the file manager on the left and the terminal on the right. By default, the terminal is pointed to the workspace folder, which is ideal as we need to install everything in this folder to prevent data loss when stopping the pod. Let's begin by installing Comfy UI in the workspace folder. We've done this several times before on this channel, so it should be familiar. First, we need to clone the Comfy Anonymous repository from GitHub. Navigate to the Comfy Anonymous GitHub page and copy the repository link. Return to Jupyter, open the terminal, and type git clone. Then paste the copied link and press enter. Next, we'll create a virtual environment to install Comfy UI requirements separately. In the terminal, type python-m v e n v 
VENV, this creates a new virtual environment named VENV. To activate it, you need to type source VENV slash bin slash activate. Once the environment is active, we can proceed with installing PyTorch. Copy the command from the GitHub page, paste it into the terminal, and press Enter. This installation process typically takes about three minutes to complete. Next, we need to install ComfyUI's requirements. Since the requirements.txt file is located in the ComfyUI folder, Navigate there by typing cd comfy UI. Then, install the requirements by entering pip install r requirements.txt. This step usually takes one to two minutes to finish. To enhance comfy UI's functionality, we'll install comfy UI Manager. Clone the repository into the custom nodes folder by first typing cd custom underscore nodes. Then git clone followed by the comfy UI manager link from its GitHub page. With these installations complete, we're ready to launch comfy UI. Let's start fresh to simulate the process you'd follow when accessing a paused pod. Close the current terminal and open a new one, which will automatically point to the workspace directory. First, activate the environment, then navigate to the Comfy UI directory by typing cd Comfy UI. Launch the web interface by entering python main.py dash dash listen. The process takes about 30 seconds, and when you see a local address with port 8188, it indicates that Comfy UI is up and running. To access Comfy UI, return to the Run Pod window and locate the TCP port mapping section. Copy the public IP and the external port number. Open a new browser tab. Paste the public IP, followed by a colon and the external port number. Press Enter, and you'll see Comfy UI running with the Comfy UI Manager ready for use. Now, let's load our Comfy UI workflow for data preparation. You can find this workflow, along with other valuable resources, at pixelailabs.com. This platform offers comfy UI tutorials and courses focusing on digital modeling and fashion. The link is available in the description for your convenience. After downloading the workflow JSON file, simply drag and drop it onto the comfy UI interface. Don't be alarmed if all the nodes appear in red. We'll install the necessary custom nodes using the manager. It's a straightforward process. Navigate to the manager and click on Install Missing Nodes. Install each missing node one by one. You can monitor the progress in the terminal. The entire process typically takes about five minutes, so be patient. Once completed, click the Restart button to reboot Comfy UI. You can verify when Comfy UI has fully reloaded by checking the terminal. After reloading, all nodes should be functioning correctly. This workflow is designed to simplify the process of preparing images for LoRa training. It begins by loading a set of images from a specified folder. These images are then processed through Florence 2 to generate captions. Finally, the last set of nodes saves the generated text files containing captions alongside the original images in a new folder. This streamlined approach ensures that your dataset is properly organized and annotated, setting the stage for effective LoRa training. To prepare for LoRa training, gather your best generated images of your AI digital model. In this case, we're using Alara, a 48-year-old influencer AI model 
featured in our tutorials. You can find Alara's Instagram in the description below. It's crucial to name the images numerically, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., to ensure the captions match the corresponding images during processing. For this tutorial, we've prepared 44 images of Alara in various outfits, poses, and settings. The image resolutions are a mix of 1024 by 1024 and 832 by 1216. You can also use 768 by 5 on 12, as Flux responds well to this format. In our workspace, create a folder named Dataset containing a subfolder named Elara. Upload all the images to this folder. Once the upload is complete, right click on the Elara folder and select Copy Path. Return to the Comfy UI interface and paste the copied path into the first node. Remember to add a forward slash before workspace in the path to ensure it functions correctly. Next, create a new folder for your output images and text files. Paste this new path into both output nodes in the Comfy UI interface. Again, adding a forward slash before workspace in both paths. With everything set up, we are ready to launch the workflow. Click Q prompt and wait for the process to complete. You can monitor the progress in the interface. After about two minutes, check your Ilara dataset folder. You should now have all the images along with their corresponding captions saved as text files, each sharing the same file name as its image counterpart. This organized dataset is now primed for LoRa training, setting the foundation for creating a more refined and consistent AI digital model. After preparing our dataset, the next step is to refine the image descriptions. Begin by downloading the prepared folder as an archive by right-clicking and selecting Download as Archive. Once downloaded, unzip the file and organize its contents by type, separating the text files from the images. Select all the text files and open them in Notepad++. If you don't have Notepad++ installed, it's recommended to download and install it for this process. We'll use Notepad++ to modify the description files in bulk, which will help reduce errors and save considerable time. Our goal is to modify the first lines of each description. Florence, the AI used for initial captioning, typically starts with the image is, followed by a description of the person. We want to replace this with more specific features of our AI model. Start by copying the phrase, images of a young woman. Then, press Ctrl plus H to open the Find and Replace dialog. In the Find What field, paste the copied text. In the Replace With field, enter our custom text. Instagram photo of a 48-year-old woman. Importantly, select the option to Replace All in All Opened Documents. As you proceed, You'll notice variations in Florence's descriptions. For instance, some might start with, the image shows a young woman. Replace these variations with our custom text as well. Remember to adjust the custom text based on the specific image type. For portrait photos, modify the text to state it's a portrait. Continue this process for all descriptions, adapting the custom text as needed. Once you've gone through all the files, save your changes. Click on a file and select Save All. After saving, close all documents and exit Notepad++. This bulk editing process ensures consistency across your image descriptions tailoring them to accurately represent your AI model's characteristics. 
Let's go back to Jupyter and create a new folder in our main workspace. In this folder, we'll place all our images and modified text files. This completes our data preparation task. To verify, you can open one of the images, like image number 11, and make sure it matches the description inside text file 11. Before we continue, we need to stop Comfy UI from running. You can do this in the terminal where Comfy UI is active by pressing Ctrl plus C. You should see a message indicating that the server has stopped. Double check that it's no longer running on the web interface. Great! Now, let's move on to the next chapter, which is installing the AI Toolkit. This is the tool we'll use to train our LoRa on FluxDev. Go to the GitHub page of AI Toolkit, scroll down, and copy the setup commands listed there. Open a new terminal, navigate to your workspace folder, paste all the commands, and press Enter. The installation process may take up to seven minutes. Once it's complete, you'll notice a new folder named AI Toolkit has been created. Inside this AI Toolkit folder, we need to create a text file containing your Hugging Face access key. This key will allow us to download the Flux models. To do this, create a new file in the AI Toolkit folder. Next, head over to huggingface.co. If you don't have an account, please create one and verify it. Once logged in, go to Settings, then Access Tokens. Click on Create a new token, select Read, give your token a name, and click Create Token. Copy this token key. Go back to Jupyter, open the new text file you just created, and write hf underscore token equal and pass your token here. Don't worry about exposing my token in this video. I'll delete it afterward. Don't forget to save the text file. Now, open a new terminal and navigate to the AI Toolkit folder. Type the following command, mvuntitled.txt.env. After a few seconds, you'll notice the text file has disappeared. Don't worry, it's just been hidden as a .env file. Now, let's move on to configuring our LoRa training. Start by giving your LoRa a name. For this example, I've changed the linear and linear alpha values from 16 to 32. I want to test this new value because I've already trained with 16, and the results were good. So feel free to skip this adjustment if you'd like. Next, we need to remove the comment from the trigger word line to activate it in our training. Choose a unique LoRa trigger word. I prefer using numbers for uniqueness and easy recall. Instead of using Elara, we can set it to EL4R4. This makes it easier to remember when you're writing your prompts. Now, let's set the path to our dataset folder. Copy the path and make sure to include the leading slash. We also need to decide how many steps we want our LoRa to be trained on. Based on my experience, you start getting good results between 1,500 and 4,000 steps. I'll use 3,000 steps for this example. Remember, more steps mean more time on the pod, which translates to higher costs. You can also specify how frequently you want to save a version of the LoRa during training. I'm setting it to save every 500 steps, which means we will end up with six versions of the LoRa.
Next, you'll see Sampling Settings. These settings allow us to check our output folder and get samples of our training progress at specific intervals. For our case, we'll generate images using Flux and our LoRa every 250 steps. This lets us monitor our progress as we go. You can set the prompt to be used during this sampling process. Use a couple of prompts that you want to test, and be sure to include the trigger word in brackets so that AI Toolkit will add it automatically. That's it. As you can see, the configuration is straightforward. Now, save this YAML file. After saving, copy and paste it into the config folder and give it a simple name. Now it's time to start the training process. To launch training, open a new terminal inside the AI Toolkit folder and activate its virtual environment. Note that this virtual environment is specific to AI Toolkit and different from the one we set up for Comfy UI, so don't get confused. Finally, to run the training, type the following command. Python run.py config slash ilara.yaml. This command will execute the YAML file we created and placed in the config folder. Now that the training has started, the first step will be to download the Flux model. With a high-speed internet connection, these large files will download almost instantly. So just sit back and relax. Make sure that the training steps are counting as expected. You can check the output folder every 250 steps to see sample images and monitor the progress. The training is now complete, and it took about 3 hours and 15 minutes to finish. In the output folder, you'll find LoRa files saved from each training step. I'm going to download the entire folder to my hard drive so that I can test the LoRa locally. Once the download is complete, return to your Run Pod page. At this point, we can stop our pod. Keep in mind that even when a pod is stopped, there is still a storage cost of $0.033 per hour, which adds up to about $0.8 per day for keeping your comfy UI and AI toolkit setups for future use. In my case, I want to delete the pod completely. If I need to train again, I can easily set everything up with the same settings. It's a quick process, so no worries. You can also save this video for future reference. In total, the data preparation and LoRa training process cost us around $3, which is quite affordable. Now, let's test our LoRa and see the results. To do this, move the downloaded LoRa files into the LoRa folder inside the models directory in your Comfy UI setup. I'm going to test the final LoRa file, the one trained with 3000 steps, because I was pretty satisfied with the sample results I saw during training. In my locally installed Comfy UI, I opened the Flux LoRa workflow. You can find this workflow in the resources linked below. First, choose your LoRa model. For the LoRa weight, I found that a setting of 0.95 is the sweet spot. But you can also try higher values like 1.2 or 1.4 if you want the LoRa to have a stronger impact on the model. In the positive prompt, make sure to include the trigger word we set in the configuration file. And that's almost it. This is a basic Flux workflow using LoRa. I'm going to generate four images of our AI model wearing a black dress while standing on a balcony.
As you can see, the LoRa is working effectively, and the AI-generated model closely resembles our AI model. The body size, hairstyle, and facial features are very similar to those of Alara. When generating batch images, you often get a variety of outputs that closely resemble your AI model, allowing you to select the best ones from the batch. Now, let's try a different prompt and generate four more images. As you can see, our AI model looks good. Although some images have different facial features and may not be 100% identical to our AI model, these can be refined later. For another example, let's make our AI model cosplay as Wonder Woman. To enhance the facial features and achieve even better results with greater consistency, you can use this Face Enhancer workflow with SDXL. In this setup, we are using the RealVis XL Lightning model, combined with an IP adapter and a portrait model. This face enhancing workflow is one I've used many times in my videos. You can find a link in the description below where I go into detail about how it works. I also cover it thoroughly in my AI Digital Model course. The workflow is really easy to use and can help bring back your AI model's unique features using the IP adapter. To get the best results, make sure you start with a base image that has a body and face shape similar to your AI model. It allows you to control and adjust the facial expressions as needed. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. If you're new to AI digital modeling and want to learn more, take advantage of the discount on my course and start learning today. See you in the next video.